my guy. I don't even know where to start with you. <laughs> I don't even know. Let's let's kind of put all of our cards on the table. Blaze here has done one deal. Just full transparency, jumping into this. Yeah, just a nobody in real estate. Yeah, no, but it's. <laughs> I'm I'm really excited to have this conversation because we've had a lot of. Um, very experienced people that you know mm -hmm. sitting in that seat and they've talked about how great they are and it's been really easy for me to go afterwards and do an introduction and say hey this was Michael Perry let me tell you how many deals Michael Perry's done let me about the team he's built let me tell you about Jimmy Rex let me like these these intros have kind of written themselves as we've gone through the episode right other than introducing you as that funny dude with the hot girlfriend like how, how I like being that guy That's yeah. cool. Well, I, and I think that you excel in that role. But tell me, like, legitimately though, like, how would you introduce yourself? Uh, no, like, knowing who we've who we've interviewed, right? How would I introduce myself? Uh, I would just say, uh, I don't know. I'm Blaze. You know, I feel yeah. like when I say my name is Blaze, most people are like, "That's not your real name." <laughs> and then I'm like, "Yes, yes, it is." And uh, I don't know. I feel like as you get to know me, my personality is uh, I'm loud. Uh, I got the Jersey accent sometimes going for me. Uh, um, Where are you from originally? Originally, I'm from New Jersey. Okay. So, but I was actually, I was born So that's the New thing, York. is like, I've only known you for a couple of years, and yeah. it's been in like very specific yeah, yeah. instances of real estate, right? I mean, I could give you the story. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to bore anybody who watches this, but uh, honestly, the story is, is pretty, pretty. Uh, well, ultimately, the goal is to end up, is to figure out why, why, why real estate. Yeah. Right. And, and. We love getting into the beginning of what people's life look yeah, like yeah. And, and kind of talking through what kind of started nudging you in this direction. Yeah. And this is very new, which is also why we wanted to get your opinion and get your take because yeah. the market is getting ready to completely change. And I think there's two ways to view the market right now. It's either very scary or if you're a new agent and you don't have any there's no adaptation that needs to take place from what the market just shifted from. And you could just jump into this fresh. I think you have a unique opportunity right now to crush it. Right. And we're going to talk through some of that in just a minute, but yeah, right, going back to the beginning. Yeah. The back to the beginning, um, actually born in Draper, Utah. Um, unfortunately my mom passed when I was really young from leukemia and, uh, my father, I think just really needed to get away. Uh, he got a new job in medical sales. So I grew up with a single dad in sales, you know, my whole life. Uh, and my dad always brought me around all of his friends as a young kid, which I think always made me really comfortable around older people. When you say his friends, what does that mean? Like he would take you to go hang out? You know, like my, what? Because I, I had the yeah. same thing. And I remember rolling around in my you truck, going to city council meetings and sitting yeah, in there exactly. with city planners. And like, because my dad was developing and would always right. now come to find out that SOB was leveraging the shit out of us. Yeah, right. Yeah. He was like, because no one's going to say no to the eight <laughs> yeah. year old in a no. Santa Claus costume. Entrepreneur. Right. Entrepreneur. Yeah, like there, it wasn't just out of the kindness of his heart, but like, what what were those experiences like? What did they look like? Um, honestly, just bring like he was. I, it sounds so corny because I'm from New Jersey, but like you know, he'd bring me around all of the Italian restaurant owners. You know what I mean? And he always made friends with uh, the the owners. Uh, what did he do for work? Medical or medical sales? That's yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, he would always you know we'd go down to the deli or the bakery, and like he's best friends with the owner. You know, we go down to you know some of his favorite restaurants. He knows all the owners, um, and it was just constantly bringing me around entrepreneurs. So I always knew that was my path and I, I, that's like what I wanted to be. So we always ask, what did you get? Did you take the ACT? Uh, no, I took the SAT. What did you get? Like a 1450. Is something. that good? Uh, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah, that's pretty bad. See, we all, I don't, I don't, everyone that we've asked has only taken the ACT. <laughs> There's been a lot of 17s and 18s and yeah, 19s yeah. and, um, but you didn't do well in school. No, I did really good in school. Okay. Um, you know, I always knew how to rob Peter to pay Paul. Uh, okay. You know what I mean? Explain that. Flirt with the cute girl in class and get her <laughs> answers on the math test. You know what I mean? That was yeah. my specialty. Well, you learned that from your dad, right? Exactly. Relationships. Re it's relationships will get you into more doors exactly. than than. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I had no problem being the teacher's pet. Sit right in the front. You know, right in the front of the class. Don't be scared. Raise your hand. Answer questions. Actually, you know, go home and do your homework and study, um, and then go to the teacher's office hours. And I did the, that stuff in college too. Um, but long story short, like, I don't know, I just grew up around a salesman for a dad. Uh, and I always, the reason why I brought that up is I always wanted to be like my dad and my dad played baseball, uh, for the university of Utah and then played uh, in the minor leagues. And, uh, so I, that was, that was the dream, the goal, the destiny, you know, pretty much my entire family went to the university of Utah and my dad played sports there. Um, and you know, my God family and, and my aunts, my uncles, like everybody through and through. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to play baseball for the university of Utah. That is what I'm going to do. Um, and I was convinced and I was set on it. And I worked hard for it. Uh, I got an opportunity to walk on the team. 
and unfortunately I wasn't good enough. That's just the hard reality of it. Uh, but I did make the team for a short while, and I got to play kind of an early summer fall ball uh, once you know they were getting ready for the spring season. Uh, anyone who was really a walk-on pretty much got cut. Um, and again, you know, you could call it politics, you could call it numbers. They had a ton of red shirts. There's a whole bunch of reasons it could whole be, bunch right? of reasons why it actually could have been because. I built such strong relationships there because I was that guy. Uh, you know, I was in the hitting barn at 4.30 in the morning before we went to team run at 6. And, you know, I was working hard in class and staying after hours, and I was getting to practice early, and I was taking extra what reps. Was the, what was the influence for you at that point? You know, Was it just to play baseball? Uh, I think a lot of it had to do with a lot of looking in the mirror. of like, do you really want to do this, or is it because, like, you, you know, you think your dad wants you to do this? And my dad always just wanted me to be happy and wanted, like, the best for me. Um, and I think I just wanted to prove to myself that, you know, I could make a division one team and, and be there. But what I realized afterwards was I, what I learned was how hard I worked. Uh, and I showed myself, you know, what I was capable of and what I could do. You know, I p was pushing the limits of, like I said, you know, waking up at four in the morning and then hitting by myself before team you know sit run at six or team lift at six then actually, you know, showing up early to practice, staying after practice, and, you know, doing everything I could, going into the coach's office and asking, what can I do better? How can do I do better? You admitted that you didn't make the team. Yeah. Do you feel like that was wasted time? No. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because I built some beautiful relationships from that, met some really cool people, learned a lot about myself and the limits that, you know, I was willing to push myself to. And I can look myself in the mirror for the rest of my life, and I know I did everything I could to make that team. Uh, and you know what? Not making that team was the greatest thing that ever happened to me, ever, period. Where do you? Where does this optimism come from? Because I, I think I struggle with the same thing, but like, so far, you know we just shut Mad Cash Media down. Mm -hmm. um, big loss. Like, hey, the whole thing just kind of sucked, right? The, the, how it all ended just... The whole thing kind of sucked, and 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 it didn't hit me. It didn't impact me the same way because I was very. There were so many good things that came out of it that it was hard to look at it as just a total loss. Where does where does that come from, or what is that? Do you think? Um, when one door closes, another opens, and uh, you know it's better to be the guy who's looking for the next opportunity and the next moment, and to realize that for whatever reason that didn't happen. And I truly believe everything in life happens for a reason. And, you know, people come into your life for, you know, a reason, a season or a lifetime. Um, you got to just take every experience that comes at you full force and just learn from it. And that's it. So how do you know when it's time to cut bait then? Because I think that's another thing that people struggle with professionally and, and in, in friendships and in relationships. I, like at some point you admitted it, you're like, you know, what? I just wasn't good enough. Right. Which I'm guessing that wasn't the coach had a conversation with you and said, hey, we're cutting you. And then later that yeah. night, you're like, you know what? I'm just not good enough. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm guessing that wasn't, like, an instant transformation, right? <laughs> I would say I cried like a baby yeah. in his office and in my dorm room alone, like, you know, uh, probably for a, a good couple days. And How far into school were you at this point? Uh, I would say started summer, fall, going into spring semester. Of what year for you? Of 2014. Sorry, what, what year were you in school? You were uh, a freshman. freshman? Yeah. This was, like, your very first year? Very right? first okay. year, yeah. Um. And I don't know what it was, but I was sitting there and I just kind of, you know, looked myself in the mirror and was like, why are you feeling sorry for yourself? You know, uh, let, like, all right, that door is closed, but that doesn't mean, you know, 10 doors are open. And honestly, what I did was I just got involved. Um, you know, so the, I had a great idea. I said, I'm going to rush a fraternity. <laughs> and um, that's the next yeah. most logical step. And no one in my family has ever been in a fraternity or anything like that. To be honest with you, uh, I thought it was completely just whack. Like I was just like, that is for losers. You know what I mean? Like, so all this time though, you're still studying at school, right? Like you're, you're yeah. trying to figure out, was it hard to stay motivated in school at that time? Um, no, it became way easier to be okay. honest with you, just because I had all this time that I've never had before ever in my life. Cause like even in high school, I was on four different baseball teams. Um, you know, I would say I was kind of like, for my time, I, I would say I was like the man, you know, in a small town yeah. it, for baseball yeah. at least. Um, you know, and I played football. I mean, obviously, you had to be good enough to walk on, right? Like, yeah. still walking on is still a very high level of baseball. Yeah, I, I don't think I was like really. I don't think I was bad. I just think it, it's just you know, Division One is no joke. It's um, different. It's different. Uh, and then I also played basketball as well, and I played on a few AAU teams in high school. Blah. But anyways, like I just never had time is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. 
Uh, and I finally like had time to focus on school, which is great, but I had all this time to go do other stuff. So I jumped in the pool and I, of just getting all in and filling my time up from six in the morning and on. So for example, like in college, I started, I was trying, I was like, you know what? I've never tried other things. Let me go try weird stuff. I, I signed up on a soccer team. Uh, an intramural soccer team met these kids from Boise, Idaho. They thought I was crazy. You know, I'm talking with different accents and stuff, like pretend like I'm playing FIFA. And I'll never forget it. The first like couple minutes, uh, and I've never played soccer before in my life. They put in a cross, and I just laid out header <laughs> right in the back of the goal. These kids are like looking at me, like who is this guy? And I just made friends that way, right? Um, going to the life center, playing pickup basketball, made a ton of friends just playing pickup basketball. Um, you know, uh, working out with different guys in the gym, you know, getting to guys, you know, getting to know people that way. Um, what else? Um, you know, joining city leagues, uh, you know, I, I took up playing golf and, and, you know, building so many different relationships that way. Um, I played in a futsal league, which is like the indoor soccer league. Yeah. Um, I joined the Rebel House, which, you know, doing boxing and, and cycling. Um, I joined Core Power Yoga and started doing yoga. And I, like, just got, I don't know, I dove all in and I met all these people from all over the place. And I quickly realized, like, it, it's okay to, like, be a regular dude and, like... Wanted to be all in on life, yeah, right? Like, I, and to be all in it. on, like... On, on trying to do as much yeah. as you can with the time that yeah. you have in the day. I just constantly woke up and like had something to do. And then especially with the fraternity, um, you know, I, I remember walking in there the first time I got in a fight with one of the actives. Cause <laughs> I don't know um, me, my competitive attitude and my mentality was just like, I, I remember they were like, uh, they had FIFA, uh, a FIFA tournament and it was a $50 gift card to the pie. And so I sat down and I was like, I don't care about getting to know any of these guys. Like I want to win that damn gift card. <laughs> um, I get to the championship round. I get in a fight with this guy named Amita Tar, coolest dude ever. Um, and <laughs> and we're like fighting with one another. And next thing you know, it's like, is Blaze gonna get in the house or not? You know, they told me at least at voting um, a while ago. And uh, I got in, and I met people that I had no business meeting. But the only reason why I honestly joined that fraternity was because they raised money for Huntsman Cancer, and my mom passed away in the Huntsman Cancer Institute. So. To go back to your question earlier, and sorry it took such a long way to get to it, um, I felt like my mother pushed me um, to say, hey, it's okay to hang up the cleats on the whole baseball thing. You're meant for other things. Um, and I won't say, you know, it's like you're meant for better because, you know. You're you, meant for different, though. Both, both paths yeah. were great. Uh, it's just, you know, I felt like, yeah, that was my, it was my mom who pushed me, and I think that's where my optimism really came from. Uh, and I just said, you know what, for some reason, the baseball thing didn't work out. So I'm going to give the Sigma Chi house everything I have. And because I jumped all in, I met so many cool people, um, from all different walks of life, from different countries who speak different languages, guys who are LDS, guys who weren't LDS, guys from in-state, guys from out of state. And I just built relationships and bonds with so many cool people. So then what, so, different. so then what was your first experience with real estate? So like, when would you say that real estate kind of hit your radar? Cause you you're one of those that has been on the outside looking in and been very familiar because of the friend group that you have. Right. Yeah. Um, like that's I, when you told me, I, you called me what 60 to 90 days ago and said, Hey dude, I'm getting licensed. And I was, I was excited. Like this is all new to you, but you've been around it for years. And I would say you've seen the inside more than a lot of people probably do because of the friends that you do. Definitely. So what, what was kind of, when did real estate kind of come into your world? And then when did you, and then let's go to there. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, real estate really came into my world again through the, just the connections at the Sigma Chi house. Tons of alumni were very successful in real estate, very wealthy guys. And so that topic of conversation always came up. Uh, I met Mason Conley, uh, who helped start the Perry group, um, at a pool party and like junior senior year of college. <laughs> and me and this dude hit it off. If you know, Mason, uh, He's six foot five, two fifty, and just a big boy who's He's literally the nicest, the nicest person guy you'd ever meet in the entire world. And my competitive personality came out. Uh, we're in the pool, and I'm I'm like I'm like the Jack Russell Terrier who just wants the biggest stick in his mouth <laughs> in the yard. Um, I just went right up to him, and I was like, I was like, let's go check up. And he was like, "What, man?" And I go, "Come on, one on one, big boy. You think you're you think you're all that?" He starts like laughing. Next thing you know, at this pool party, him and I are just throwing elbows, going at it. You know what I mean? And uh, he's an ultra competitive individual. And he's also ultra. competitive. He doesn't let a ton of people see that, I think. But uh, Mason hates to lose yeah. more than oh yeah the majority of people that he, I know. Mason hates to lose more than he wants to win. Yeah. 
um, and uh, I'm banging threes, and uh, <laughs> and he's getting all pissed off, and we just formed a bond right then and there. It sounds corny. It's a true story. It's We should have been talking to girls, but, you know, <laughs> uh, we just fell in love with each other. And, um, <laughs> you know, I didn't know what he was doing at the time, uh, and that's what how What was I met he doing Michael. at the time? Where, like, where... Where was this in their timeline? Honestly, in their timeline, it was right when I first met Michael and Mason when they had, you know, I don't, I can't speak for, for Michael, but I can't speak for Mason. You know, Mason was like, yeah, dude, I'm like 30 grand in, in debt and we just started this real estate company and it's going to work out. <laughs> and I'm just like, what year Good was for this? You. <laughs> 2019, 2018? Right when they started the yeah. group. Yeah. I would say it was, it was like probably 2017. Um, and, you know, Mason was telling me all the funny stories about him and Michael together uh, with Jack, with Jack, yeah. not knowing a di- like what they were doing, but they were doing it. They were giving it their all. Yeah, and they I were wanna, all in. If they if they do listen to this podcast, I want to give them such a, a a huge shout out. Of they showed a bunch of old dudes that we can do things differently yep. and do just as well, if not better than you. Yep. And I think that is really cool. Oh, and, it's yeah. And what I, they I did, texted Michael the other day, making fun of him. I'm like, I am so glad that I can tell my kids that I used to know Michael Perry, right? Yeah. Just because what he, I, I think the level of youth that he is infused, like the tables that he's sitting at and the table, like, I'm like, dude, I, I am really glad to know you. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, you're a cool dude. I'm stoked to see what you're doing. Oh, yeah. But that was at the beginning, and it's interesting to see, it's interesting to hear that perspective of what they were actually chiseling away at at oh, that yeah. point. And it wasn't easy, right? No. Uh, I think I think Zillow, you know, uh, was obviously – it was new at the time and they took advantage of a tool and a resource and a system. They weren't afraid of technology. No. Right. Right. Where, uh, where real estate was kind of old school. Right. And they brought new school to it and they brought culture and they brought a fun community and they brought that young energy into the office. And I think that was, that was, you know, so cool for me to watch it grow. And, you know, I can't lie. Uh, it, it was, it was hard and yeah, fun. Yeah. Why didn't you jump in? I, I, I didn't want to go work for my buddies. And I also just had a crazy opportunity uh, that I'll touch on briefly. I uh, I had an opportunity with a gentleman named James Hall, who's my mentor and just a guy I really look up to in business. To uh, James? To James. He is a beast. Uh, I met him through raising money for Huntsman Cancer. I got him on the phone, and I was just raising money. And next thing you know, we went out to lunch. We fell in love, you know, and uh, – he Do you me fall in love easy? That's the second, like, falling in love story. I right? just love the dude. Um, and uh, he invites me up to his house in Park City. And I'm looking around like, whoa, this guy does pretty good. He's got jets, cars, houses all over the world. And I was just asking myself, who is this guy? Yeah. And he offered me a job. Uh, he said he was starting a company. To be honest with you, when he was telling me the, the whole pitch, I didn't even know, hear what he said. I was just like, sure, man, whatever. What <laughs> you had already said yes. I was like, yeah, hey, dude, man, I got want? an opportunity Let, yeah, for you. Yeah, let's go. You're loaded, so <laughs> whatever you want. Uh, and I, I mean, Does I, money buy happiness? I don't know, but I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, yeah. I, I learned a lot. I, I feel like I'm the luckiest kid in the world. Uh, I am fresh out of college, flying around the country on this guy's plane. Um, it was definitely interesting. Uh, here I am on this guy's plane. You know, I don't know. And he has a global, so it's not like, you know, a little jet. It's a plane plane. It's a plane plane. Yeah. Um, he owns Winston Churchill's birthright home in England. <laughs> and I'm just like, who is this guy? Yeah. But he taught me so much. And what does he do? Uh, insurance. Okay. So that's how I got into the insurance game. Um, what we did was we built out a uh, an API for automotive dealerships. What is allowed. API? Sorry. An API, um, to be honest with you, don't even know what it means. <laughs> Uh, couldn't tell you. It's okay. Uh, I couldn't either. No. Um, but we built out a, an API that allowed the dealership to send you an auto insurance quote to your phone while you're on the showroom floor after you agree to numbers. So dealers have a tool that is a desking tool and it goes over to their finance. So we just created that API that, that would, uh, when it would hit the finance office, it triggered the text message. It would go through, you know, 20 different carriers and then send you the best quote. Uh, you could for that new car for that new car on the fly exactly sweet and then we would share the commission with the dealership um that went from you know startup in his house to office space down we work down in salt lake to sold in two and a half years for over 300 million dollars which is insane that's crazy crazy and you own 15 percent of that you said <laughs> I, I wish um no i was a small small fish but uh i mean or i wouldn't be sitting here talking to you about doing real estate when did you meet your girlfriend uh, we met in college, uh, 20, I'd say 2020. 
So she is a gymnast. Yep. At the time. Yep. On the U of U team. Yep. What is your opening line to her the very first time that you see her? Uh, do you remember? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, well, I hit her up via Instagram, actually. Stop. <laughs> yes, I did. You but, hit the DMs? Oh, yeah, I hit the DMs. I slid right in. And it's because we knew each other, you know? Uh, we knew of each other, uh, just through mutual friends. What possessed you? What What made you think, like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm going to shoot this shot. Did she look at you for two? Like, what, what, like, what? What was it that you were like, okay, no, I got to go for this? I don't know. Just the confidence and optimism of, no, she'll talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, no, she's definitely yeah. gonna hit me back. You got cut from the walk on team at, at, at the U. Like, of course, she's gonna talk yeah, to you. Yeah, she's gonna talk. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And she I? did, though. Yeah. She did. She That's did. manifested. She wrote back. You manifested and, it. Uh, yeah. Next thing you know. Okay, so what was your opening Look, line? I'm a big. Okay, you what know was what? your opening We're, line? Screw the real estate thing. Let what me, was let your me opening offer line? some real estate. Okay, let's go. Some relationship let's advice. Go. What? For the fellas out there. Okay, when you hit up a girl Hold initially. On. Nico, can we show a picture of Blaze and his girlfriend? We're going to show one right here in the middle. Blaze is that dude that you see at the restaurant, and you're like, he either makes a lot of money or he's really funny. And then you talk to him for five minutes, you're like, okay, he's really he's funny. He's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, um, that's that's how I would describe you and her. Well, well thank right? you. I appreciate it. No, that's a, that's a out of respect. Um, I pick up the phone. Okay. Okay. There's no texting, chit chat. Like everyone our age and below, they just want to talk on the phone for hours yeah. before they actually get to the date. We're going to save the talking for when you get to the date. So you set the appointment. Okay. So you the say you go straight for the appointment. Yeah, here's real estate right here. It's an, the phone is an appointment setter. Okay. As you know, just pick up the phone. I remember, I'll never forget. It. I called her. I was like, I was like, uh, so you just DM'd her and say, what's her number? Yeah. She was like, uh, hello. And I was like, hey, what's up? And she was like, who is this? All pissed. And I was like, come on, you know who this is. Stop. And she was like, is this Blaze? And I was like, damn right, it's Blaze. <laughs> I, I, and then you I, did not yes, talk to her Oh, like yes, that. I did. So there she giggled, go. of course, which was great. And I just said, can I take you out to dinner on Wednesday or Thursday? And, you know, you it's, not. It's, not, it's not different than real estate. You know, you're setting the appointment. And uh, it's just sales in general. And uh, Does she know that this is how you look at it? Uh, yeah, she better. She better. She knows she married a salesman, or she's gonna marry a salesman. Are you guys gonna Are you gonna do the thing? Uh, not for a while, but Why? we will. What's the point of waiting? You know, that's a great question. Um, I think most guys in your seat would be. I think it's a great anxious. question. Uh, yes, and right now I'm building a company, um, which we'll touch on a little bit. We'll go, uh, that's a, that's a big portion of what we're gonna talk about. I think right now in a stage of life, she just got done with gymnastics, where like that's all she's known her whole life. And she's just jumping into business, uh, and she's actually in a sales job right now. And I think if we jumped into marriage right now, we're before she figured out, you know, this next piece of her life, um, you know, I want her to feel comfortable moving into the next step. We're like, I've kind of been out of college, right, and I've been working, and I've been figuring out myself. Um, you know, I explained all those things that I, I tried and jumped into in different jobs. You know, with her, gymnastics was the one thing her whole life. You might be the most confident man I have ever had a conversation with. Why? For you to say that you want her to go and find herself. Absolutely. Good for you. Man, you get, you know, sometimes people jump into marriage a little too quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, someone like you, dude, you know yourself. You know who you want to be. You know the direction you're going. So yeah, but I would say, I like, I didn't you, at the time when I got, like, the things that I love about my wife today, I, you met her, when did you meet my wife? I, I met her, like, two years ago. I say, it's been a while now, and, like, the reasons why... I probably loved her when I introduced you to her two years ago or not the same reasons why I love her today. Right. After starting a company together, after raising three kids together, after like living life together for a couple of years and seeing like it wouldn't have made a difference though if I was married or not. Right. right? Like I could have been, I, and I asked you that more like as a, as a joke than anything, but like I don't think that you need to be married in order to grow like that together. And I don't think it lessens the commitment at all because the reasons why I stay with my wife today are not because we're married. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. So how, how how does all of this translate into real estate? You do insurance for a while. You get you guys end up buying, getting bought out, and then you're like, okay, now what's next? Honestly, I just saw one of my best friends in the world become successful in real estate. You know, he had two cars in the garage, you know, and they're not like cheap cars, you know. Yeah. The guy's putting $200,000 cars in the garage. He's got Rolexes on his wrist. He's got all the fancy clothes. Uh, and I thought to myself, like, what is he doing that I'm not? And it's not that I didn't have some of those things either, it's just that, you know, he was 26 or 25 years old, 26 years old, tripling what I make. He moved a lot of real estate. A lot. 
Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong, I was making a, a lot of money myself, but when you're just around other people that are doing exponentially more than you are, you know, you, I don't know, you think what you're doing is not well, enough. You're probably looking at people too, and you're like, I, with all due respect, if Mason can do it, I can do it. Yeah. Right, and I don't think that's disrespectful to say. I don't of, think so either, Mason, because I think that you're okay with people looking at you and being that guy. I'm okay with people looking at me and being that me guy. Too. Right? Yeah. Um, what was it that finally you're like, "Okay, I'm in on this"? So after our company sold uh, for a ton of money, uh, you know, it was uh, a nice little kick to the bank account. Um, How to much be honest did you, with you, you, you Your company to help change my life. Um, Edge Homes did. Edge Homes did. Absolutely. Shout out. Yeah. How so? Uh, I sold my house and vineyard. Um, you, know, you paid what for it? I paid three sixteen. Yeah, sold for almost five twenty five. Congratulations! Um, so you know that was that was a huge kick to my you know my life. Um, you know, so so you were actively investing in real estate and seeing like okay this is pretty sweet like what exactly what it can do not only can it help buy those things but like the lifestyle that real estate can actually lead to is crazy crazy, and uh, you know nothing worth having though is it, you know, comes easy and I'm, yeah. I'm learning that now we'll we'll get to that. Uh, I would just say this is, you know, I invested in real estate. I did the flip with Mason and Travis um, and Zach, and that was a tremendous experience for me. You know, and it was kind of funny because I, I was the first time I ever just like sniffed a little bit of dough in my life. You know, I just, yeah. made, you know, you know, 200 grand off the sale of that home and, you know, a uh, hundred K plus off. Uh, Appreciate you being a client, by the way. Yeah, of course. Um, off, you know, the sale of our company. So it's like, here I am 26 years old. They've manifested all this shit. I've worked hard <laughs> to make like three, 400 grand. And again, some of the people you brought on the show, they'd laugh at that. That's not a lot of money, but in my head, you know, I'm feeling like the man, you know, yeah. it's like, and Mason you called very me. much were right. It, it felt like it. Uh, and you know, Mason called me and he was like, Hey, we, we need a hundred grand to close on this house. I need your help. Let's go today. And he's a closer. And I was just like, I mean, what do you, what's my return going to be? And he was just like, Blaze, you know I'll take care of you. We'll run through the numbers. And idiot me, like I love Mason to death, but I should have been like, no, let's get all hey, the shit in writing. Me, like, let me hear a little bit me, more yeah, about this. Let me this. see the yeah. numbers. I, Dude, I'm not kidding with you. <laughs> I wired the kid 100 grand. And uh, I just believed and trusted him. And, um, you know. I think you believed in the product at that point too, right? Yeah. In what real estate was and what Mason was doing. Yeah. And, uh I don't regret it. I mean, I made 30% of my hundred grand in six months because Travis and Mason and Zach are smart dudes. Yeah. Uh, so I was really lucky to be in that position. It, how do you think, cause you've done a great job, I think of positioning yourself in the rooms with people that know more about what you're doing. Yeah. I, I think like, just as I hear you talk, um, which I think is uh, like, I, I, I just barely started having professional coaching within the last six months. Right. Like it's, it's all very new and it's because I think, for the most part, I was able to put myself into rooms with people that like, I like, listen, I'm just gonna sit in the back corner over here. I'm not going to say anything. Just keep talking yep. Mason and Travis and, and keep teaching me. And I'm just going to sit back yeah. and listen. Yeah. What uh, do you, how, how do you think you go about that? I don't know. I, I kind of want to go back to your optimism question um, and tie it into that because when I was in the fraternity stuff, I was in rooms that I had no business being in rooms with uh, John Huntsman, uh, for example, had lunch with that guy. Um, and I just saw, you know, he built a billion dollar company. It was worth $16 billion by the yeah. time he passed away. But he changed so many people's lives, gave back to the community. Uh, and I just saw in SIG, I just saw so many successful doctors and lawyers, uh, people in, you know, real estate you graduated, developers. right? Yeah. What did you get your degree in? Business administration and With accounting. The, okay. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I didn't good. think it was like, that's good for you. GPA was? 3.8. Damn, son. Damn, son. Well, I wasn't the smartest kid in class. I made Damn friends with son. the smarter kids Good in class. Good for you. Um, so that goes back to what you were saying. I've always How do you create that. value for those people? Because I think you see it from different people that post. Like the most annoying, and I agree with them. You get it from title reps. You get it from mortgage guys. The most annoying DM that you can possibly get is, hey, can I take you to lunch? Yeah. How can you... How can you go? And I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to create value for you, but it's like the the lunch isn't what matters, right? It's not the lunch, but it's the it's the relationship that can be built. How do you create value for people like that when when you might not have as much to contribute in the conversation? Yeah, to tie back into real estate and why there's people who are successful and, and there's people who aren't, uh, you have to find their motivation. Um, what whatever, just whatever it is that they like, it could have nothing to do with that class. Uh, just find find something that they like. So the way that your current business now is set up, you have one of the titans and one of the pillars of Utah real estate backing you. Yeah. You have Lucky Josh, the man Stern, yep. who 
together with his mom, built the Stern team, which would which still continues to sell. How many deals a year do you know? Oh my god, I, I think she somewhere between four to, to six hundred sales a year. She, she, I don't want Josh. I am so sorry for what I'm sure I'm completely off, but they they sell a lot more real estate than the majority of people that you ever yeah. talk to. The Stern team. Uh, for the past 12 years, I believe, has done over $400 million in volume, like every year consistently, yep. year in, year out. Uh, and Lee Stern is in her 70s. I golf with that woman, and I love her to death. Uh, she works in the office right next to me. She's still cold calls. She's still cold calls. She's still cold calls the shit she's, she's out of calls. phone calls every single day. You know, like, you know, hi, Carrie, this is Lee. You know, <laughs> and I'm just like, wow. You know, it it's, it's motivating to be in the office. Um, so basically, Mason, you know, uh, he was like, dude, you just need to get in real estate. Like you just, you need to do it. You need to just, you know, go all in. Cause we sold our company Our, you know, I, I, now I'm kind of sitting here for six months. I was doing the flip and then I was just like, I'm kind of lost. I don't know what, to, what I want to do. Uh, I, I, I feel completely lost. What's the next step? What's again, I've had a door close. What's the next door open. And, uh, Mason called me, I was at the gym and I'm like running on the treadmill and I'm like, what's up idiot. And next thing you know, he goes, hey, this is Josh Stern, buddy. And I'm like. <laughs> Did you know who Josh was at that no time? No clue. Yeah. Could care less. You know what I mean? I was, okay, who are you? you congrats. Know? Yeah, uh, congrats. <laughs> uh, what's go- uh, He starts laughing. He said, Mason said you and I need to go to lunch. And I just said, sounds great. You want to go You know, later today or tomorrow? <laughs> tomorrow you know, Having whatever. no idea who this dude no is. No idea. I don't know. You just got to say yes to opportunities in life, I guess. And just be lucky that say people that are looking out for you. Say that again. Just got to say yes. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that talk themselves out of their own opportunities. Yeah, say yes to opportunity. Uh, and so we went out to, what's the worst that's going to happen? I might just make a new friend. I might have yeah. a great conversation. And that, whatever, that's it. And that, that could be it. Uh, we went out to lunch, and he just, he shared his vision with me. And um, now we can get back to all the real estate stuff that people actually would, would want to listen to, not well, me yeah, talking so what's about my that? life story. <laughs> what's that vision? So... You know, Josh, Josh Stern, his specialty is, is vision and vision is seeing what others can't. And Josh absolutely, you know, sees the vision and he, he, he's very, um, Socrates like in the way of, you know, Socrates has that famous quote of, uh, the only thing I know is that I know nothing. Uh, Josh is every day learning, uh, and, and, and teaching. Um, uh, and the one reason really why I wanted to partner with him was, you know, he shows up to lunch in average clothing, uh, you would never know the guy is extremely successful, doesn't need to work ever again, uh, and he's purely doing this because he wants to give back. Guy packs his lunch to work every day. Um, he's you know, very low-key. He's very low-key. He takes his time off. Yep, yep. And he's he, good about his time management, I would say. Absolutely. Better than most, especially and, in this industry. Yeah, and uh, I think he just genuinely wants the best for people and really wants to see others succeed. Uh, and his vision is there are so many successful independent independent agents uh, here in Utah and all over the country. But success, honestly, right here in Utah, I mean, for the past ten years we've been in a growing market, and you know I felt like you know for the past four or five years you could probably sneeze and sell a house. You know, obviously now it's way harder. Yeah. Um, but there's so many successful independent agents out there, and Josh's vision is I want successful in, uh, agents to join my coaching program. And in return, I'll give them all the benefits of a team. I'll coach them three times a week. I'll give them all of this structure. I'll give them leads, CRM, the tools, the resources, the systems, and the processes to be successful. And I'll allow them to lead with their name and their brand as an independent agent. So they join our program and they don't, that their name doesn't disappear. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't want to join a team or successful independent agents don't want to join a team because they're going to lose their name, their brand and their image. And they just spent thousands of dollars on that. Yeah. And that's that especially going into what I think this market shift is going to turn into that. That's going to turn into what brand is the most solid. So if you are on a team, you better be very, very confident in what that team. Like if going back to our friends, the Perry group, if you're an agent and you're calling, you're saying, Hey, I'm such and such with the Perry group that carries weight. Yeah. Right. Me being able to call and say, Hey, I'm calling. I'm an agent with edge homes that carries weight within the industry. Right. This, this is kind of a different focus where, you know what, you're going to have to build your brand. I'm going to show you how to do it because the Stern team has a very solid personal reputation for Josh. Here's how I'm going to build a personal brand. And that, and that there's not a ton of places that are offering anything like that, right? Well, let me go back to a little bit. Um, you know, this is also only designed for 
agents who are already successful. So, you know, this isn't designed for new agents. Sorry, and what is your role? Are you an agent? You're uh, you're leading this, correct? Yeah, my you're role leading is director the of sales. Yeah, and then I'm also leading the charge with uh, Dave Bachman, who was a successful real estate agent in New Jersey, actually. So it's funny that we have two Jersey boys on the team. Yeah. Um, Dave is uh, way smarter than me, uh, by far, just way better than me. Everything real estate. How many agents do you guys have so far? We have 17. Damn, son. I didn't know you guys had that many. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, we're, we're looking to have, we're hoping we will have 30 by the end of the year. And so right now, what what are you guys focusing on? Like, what is your, and ultimately this is me leading up to a, a difficult question that we can just ask now. You, the people that you were friends with before you got licensed are now your competition. Yep. To an extent. To an extent. How do you, as a brand new agent that has less than three deals under your belt, how do you compete with somebody like Michael Perry? Yeah. You guys go to the same, and I'm not even asking for you to disrespect or anything like that, no. but I also want people to understand that like, it, just because you're new doesn't mean you can't still be damn good at what you do. Right. Right? Yeah. So how, how do you, as somebody that is ultra competitive, that's focused on who you are as an individual going into the transaction, not the weight the team's going to carry, how do you compete with somebody that would appear to be a mega agent, mega successful, um, a lot of team, because Michael not only can call and say, I'm a part of the Perry group, he can call and say, I lead the Perry group. Right. How do you compete with that if you're if you're working with a, a seller or a buyer? Uh, respectfully. <laughs> respectfully. Um, respectfully, I would just say, well, who do you think taught Michael everything he knows? <laughs> Josh Stern. It's very true. So do you want to, yeah. you know, do you want to learn from the master or do you want to learn from the Padawan? Um, <clears throat> Michael's really smart. Michael's an amazing agent. Michael's an amazing leader. I love the guy. I was honored to be at his wedding. Uh, I ran into him yesterday at Bjorn's Brew. He got out of his car, gave me a hug. Him and I are super close. For sure. To answer your question honestly, I don't, and I, and I'm I don't not, I'm see just using him, competition. And I'm just using him as an example, but how, how do you compete in an industry right now where you have some very, very experienced agents that are really good at what they do? How do you, how do you compete against that when you can't, when you can't rely on the track record as yeah. much as like, and I, I still think it's very doable, right? I still think it's very, very doable to, to explain why you're good at something without talking about the volume that you sell or the team that you're a part of. Like, I, I think that you can very much do it. You just have to be very aware of what you are good at. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to like the, the old saying of, um, you know, uh, hard work is always going to, outbeat talent. Facts. And so, I, I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example. So with Josh's vision, like I said, there's so many successful independent agents out there, right? Yeah. Um, so people who have been doing 10 to 20 deals a year without, you know, the Perry Group, without a team. So Josh's vision is, how can I get them to double their production? Well, how I'll do that is what we're going to do Monday through Friday is at 8.15, we're going to have a huddle call every single day, Monday through Friday, where we get together as a team and we talk about what were our big wins from yesterday and what are our goals today? What are we going to get done today? I'm going to knock 50 doors today. I'm going to make 50 contacts. I'm going to circle prospect uh, my listing here, here, and here. Uh, I'm going to hand out 50 business cards here, here, and here. You know, whatever, whatever the goals are, you know, you list them out for the team and the team holds you accountable. Uh, next, we roll right into a script practice, uh, and that's at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, we do that for about 30 minutes before we get in at 9, and we prospect from 9 to noon. Now, Dave leads the prospecting calls, and, you know, we're going over just canceled scripts. We're going over expired scripts. We're going, out, uh, going over just listed scripts. I mean, we are going through a different script every single day, you know, 40 different uh, objection handlers, all of those things. These are, and these are all based on things that Josh has seen after selling, Absolutely. after doing and processing hundreds and exactly. thousands of transactions exactly. at this point. So we're just, we're just continually beating on our craft and working on our skills every single day. Uh, and there's so many teams and 
individuals that don't hold themselves accountable and do that every single day. Well, especially in the last couple of years with what the market has been, exactly. skills went out the window. Skills went out the window. And this, you didn't this, need skill. Yeah, and in the last two years, it was very hard to see who was actually good at selling real estate yeah. and who just had a really good network of people yeah. that were trying to buy a house at the point. Right. Right, and it's going to be very interesting to see going into the next couple of years what agents stand out, but I think it's going to be those that have the personal brand and are very crystal clear on why they're good at what they do, which is what you just said, right? right? You you can list off all of the reasons why you are a very viable option for people to use to buy or sell a house right now. Yeah. Because I am in, and before noon, I have already put in more time to getting better at this than than the majority of my competition will exactly. this week. Exactly, um, And to, you know, I'll, I'll just continue real quick. Um, you know, from nine to noon, we're, we're prospecting. And... You know, a lot of a lot of people I've learned in real estate don't want to pick up the phone. No, uh, I've interviewed plenty of agents who are scared to pick up the phone, and that doesn't make them a bad agent. And again, Michael Perry, it's very common in this Michael industry. Perry, Mason, and Jack, they showed you that cold calling wasn't the only way. You know, yeah. um, and so I'm not saying that that is the only way, but we're doing that three hours a day. And all that other stuff on the well, back yeah. And end. I think if you're if you're the type of person that wants to knock the way that you're doing it, you better have. Okay, now we're going to probably get into numbers, or we're going to get into something, which is you better have a track record and and be very crystal clear. Like that's the difference between the people that we're talking about is you're very clear on your way, but if anybody knocks it and they're not Michael Perry, they can very clearly say this is the way that I'm going about right. my business and approaching it like that. You need somebody in your life, and if your broker's not doing that, then what are they paying the money for? Right. Right. If your if if your coach or your mentor isn't actually adding value and pulling you forward like that, then what are they adding to you? And, and we're going to get Josh on the show hopefully soon. Hopefully you can go back and tell him this has been fun. Cause yeah. I already I told think, him I was coming. So. I think having Josh on would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, and the guy is just, <laughs> he'll, Brilliant. he'll pump you up. He'll, he'll make you want to go sell 20,000. Yeah. Um, but you know, what's great too is having Josh, uh, every single Monday as well. He sends out numbers that matter, learning how to run absorption reports. And one thing I've noticed that a lot of agents don't do is when they send over a CMA, they don't add the absorption report in that CMA that they're sending over. Uh, and what that shows to your buyer is, you know, don't believe me, believe the data, uh, you know, kind of take the human error out of it, uh, by saying, Hey, there's a 2.8 level uh, of inventory, or 2.8 month level of inventory in this uh, specific area code, it's a, a great time to actually sell despite what other people are saying in the market. You're just speaking with knowledge and numbers and facts uh, and adding that into your CMA. Just a small thing like that that Josh has taught me to separate myself from the competition. Well, I don't think that this team is for everybody. Just listening to it because this is, this is going to be for people that just want to be pointed into a direction and run. It sounds like there's a lot of self-accountability, team accountability, but there's not going to be somebody there making sure you do your cold calls every more like it, it, it sounds like a very high level type team which i think is what's going to be successful yeah i mean i would say dave, dave is the accountability manager on because i mean like for example today at noon uh every monday at noon we all get on a zoom call uh and discuss what listings we have um and what areas we're you know what deals we're planning on taking for that week uh this way everyone can try to double end deals uh, you know, Hey, I've got, the, you know, it, we, we get together like that and that's how we yeah. hold each other accountable of, you know, Hey, what are you doing? Um, the minimum is 12 deals, uh, to join the team. So, uh, which a lot of teams don't have minimums. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you're not holding yourself accountable, you know, um, Josh sits down and, and, you know, he goes through all of your goals with you uh, and then meets with you actually once a week to make sure you're hitting those goals and goes into a really deep dive of how you're going to get there. Um, so that's great. And then Josh teaches Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, he, he, he teaches, uh, buyer presentations, listing presentations, CMA, absorption report. Uh, and then every single week he pushes out the numbers that matter, uh, and builds out an absorption report for each area code in the count and all the counties. So, you know, you know, Hey, this is a good uh, area code to call for sellers, which allows you to be. And I, and I think this is where a lot of agents get mixed up, but that allows you to be the most effective with your time. So it's not just it's not just about putting in the time, it's about putting in the time effectively. Yeah. Well, it's about being the local economist and, um, you know, <clears throat> you, yeah. Uh, like, for example, what's great about the absorption report stuff is let's say you're in Draper and let's say buyers between five hundred and seven hundred thousand dollars and $700,000, you know, there's a, a, a two-month supply of inventory. And then... Uh, Buyers in between 1.2 million and 1.5 million, you know, there is a four-month uh, supply of inventory. 
Um, what's nice is you can take that knowledge, you know, and go to your sellers at 500,000. They probably just made a boatload of money on that home. They can now sell that and go upgrade into, you know, that, that higher demographic. And you can clearly explain to them, Hey, right now, because you have such a short level of inventory, you can get top dollar from your home. And now we can go into this other market that's still in your, you know, in Draper. So you can still live in Draper, but now you can get a way nicer home, you know, uh, for you know whatever it is 1.1 1.2 and you could probably get a deal on it because there's you know a higher level of inventory and even if they say no it allow at least allows you to move that needle yeah. with your buyer and, and there's right? so many other agents out there that are way smarter than me and will roll your eye, roll their eyes at that and be like oh duh you know and i they could articulate way better than i can um but uh, you understand what i'm trying to yeah. say is well just, so what hey, give give us this as we kind of end this what is your what is your best real estate hot take my best real estate hot yeah, your best real, like <clears throat> mine would be like I don't think all agents are worth three percent, hmm. right? Like I just I I don't I think there's a lot of them that are, I don't think all of them are though. What's my best real estate hot take? I don't know. I mean that'll take some thought. Um, I would just say everyone thinks that they can do it. Uh, I dare you to try. <laughs> yeah. Has it been harder than you thought it would be? Absolutely. Yeah, you watched a lot of the fun parts that I'm sure Mason let you see, but you probably didn't see the late night phone calls, the late night emails, like what your life actually looked like. Yeah. Right? I just think a lot of people like this, see the success of real estate and they just, you know, it's a little glamorized at times. So that's it, not even a word. Is it, it can be. Well, over glamorized. For example, uh, you know, here's my hot take, I guess is, uh, <clears throat> I left the nine to five to work, you know, nine to nine. Yeah. And it's been more than you thought it would be. Yeah. But that's where the money's that made. Sense. That's yeah. where the money's made. That is where the money's yeah. made. It's uh, before hours, after hours, and on weekends, mm -hmm. you know. Um, this has been a tremendous experience so far. Uh, don't don't get me wrong. I d decided to join the market at probably the hardest time, uh, but it's all mindset. Yeah. You know, is it the hardest time? This is where the money's going to be made. Like, this is, even if it's not this year, it's the people that are putting in the time and putting in the effort now. It's it, just, if you look at numbers. Yeah. Real uh, estate always goes up. It, There's times it, where it goes down. It always goes up. It always goes up. Yeah. And I would say, you know, with interest rates rising, you know, for every point we, we gain, we lose 18% of first-time home buyers. Uh, but there's a, been, there's a lot of people in Utah that have been waiting for this moment. Yeah. And it's finding those buyers is what will take you, you know, to the next level. That's why you should hire a contact creator. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? That's it. That's all we got know. to cover. You got any funny questions for me? I don't think so. I think that's it. We kept it PG-13 this time. I'm happy. You got any good jokes? No. Do you? No. Let's none, call it that. None that are PC. We got to get you out. All right. Peace, bro. Thank you.